Marcus Wesson was someone who was extremely hungry for power. Since he was extremely inadequate in his outside life, he decided to create his own cult. However, the members of his family came from incestuous relationships with his daughters and nieces. He fathered seven children by them, bringing the total number of children in Wesson's house to 18. He isolated them and brainwashed them into believing that he was the Messiah. He couldn't keep a steady job as he constantly moved the family into uninhabitable homes, including army tents, abandoned trailers, and tugboats. On March 12, 2004, Marcus bought a house in Fresno that used to be an office building. The city authorities took action to evict the family as this building was non-residential. Taking this as an attack against his family, Marcus decided that his days as a cult leader were over. Welcome to History's Biggest Villains. Marcus Wesson was born on August 22, 1946 in Kansas, the oldest of four children to Benjamin and Carrie Wesson. He was raised as a member of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Wesson claimed that his mother was a religious fanatic and his father was an alcoholic and a child abuser who abandoned the family when Wesson was a child. By the early 1960s, the family had moved to San Bernardino, California. After dropping out of high school, Wesson joined the U.S. Army, serving from 1966 to 1968 in the Vietnam War as an ambulance driver. When Marcus left the Army, he moved to San Jose, California. There, he married Rosemary Maiderina, and the two had a son in 1971. In 1974, Marcus began sexually abusing Rosemary's 8-year-old daughter, Elizabeth. He then married her when she was 14 and he was 27. Over the next 16 years, he had 10 children with her. Elizabeth's older sister sent her seven children to live with Marcus, claiming that she couldn't care for them because of a drug addiction. The result was now a house with 17 children. Marcus never kept a steady job, earning most of his income from welfare. He constantly moved the family from place to place. At one time, the family lived in a 26-foot boat moored in Santa Cruz Harbor. Marcus sometimes scavenged hamburgers out of a McDonald's dumpster for his family to eat. Marcus didn't list his boat as an asset on his welfare forms and he was arrested for welfare fraud in 1990. After his release, he began having sex with his daughters and nieces. According to court testimony from Ruby Ortiz, one of the nieces sent to live with the Wessons, Marcus began sexually abusing her when she was eight. Ruby said that she loved Marcus at the time and agreed to marry him when she was 13. The marriage ceremony consisted of them putting their hands on the Bible and reciting marriage vows. Marcus married three of his nieces and two of his daughters this way and had children by all of them. Marcus's actual wife, Rosemary, had no qualms with his incestuous ways. In fact, when Ruby ran away from home as a teenager, Rosemary persuaded her to come back to the house to take care of her son by Marcus. Ruby also testified that Marcus could be cruel and jealous and he isolated his children from the outside world, beating them with sticks and baseball bats when the girls talked to boys or did not learn his lessons. None of Marcus's children ever went to school. He taught them using flashcards, school textbooks, and his own twisted brand of Christianity. He taught them daily lessons regarding his own omnipotence. His teaching centered around polygamy and incest. He was also obsessed with vampires, even giving his daughters and nieces vampire names. Anyone who thought of leaving or telling anyone outside the house was promised a painful death. The boys could not talk to the girls, and the girls were forced to sexually serve Marcus. In the early 90s, Marcus again shuffled the family around multiple times. They lived in a trailer, then a large army tent in the Santa Cruz Mountains with no running water, then an old rusted out tugboat off the shore of Marin County, California. They even lived in a school bus at one point. After witnessing the siege of David Koresh's compound in Waco, Texas in 1993, Marcus tried to fashion his family into his own personal cult. As he watched TV coverage of the incident, Marcus said to his children, this is how the world is attacking God's people. This man is just like me. He is making children for the Lord. That is what we should be doing, making children for the Lord. The Wessons spooked their neighbors. Marcus was a very obese man and one neighbor in Fresno described his hair as one big long greasy dreadlock. It was just caked in dirt and oil. When Marcus would go out with the family, the woman wore dark robes and walked behind him in silence with their heads looking down. When the Wessons lived on the tugboat, the girls would row Marcus to shore and back. 
They rode him like they were slaves, says one neighbor. I had him pegged as some sort of Jonestown cult. Marcus taught his family to be prepared to die if anyone ever tried to break up the household. He told his niece, Rosa Solorio, and his daughter, Sabrina Wesson, that they were strong soldiers who would hunt down and kill family members who betrayed him and who might have to kill the family and themselves to prevent a breakup. As a signal to his seriousness, he purchased several coffins from antique stores in Fresno. According to a shop owner, Marcus said that he needed the wood to repair his boat. He left the caskets at the store for nearly a year and when he came to pick them up, the girls loaded each of the caskets into a yellow school bus. All of the boys in the family moved out of the house when they were old enough, as did most of the girls. However, two of the daughters, Sabrina and Elizabeth Wesson, and one of the nieces, Rosa Solorio, stayed with their father until adulthood, supporting the family, as there were still several young children in the house. Once some of the girls had become old enough to work, Marcus took all of their earnings and used them to buy a house in Fresno in 2003. The house had been an old office building, but the city evicted them as the building wasn't cleared for residential use. Eventually, Ruby Ortiz and Sofina Solorio grew tired of living with Marcus, so they left without their children. Why? On March 12, 2004, the women returned to reclaim their children after learning that the family planned to leave Fresno. They also learned that Marcus was still having sex and still having children with his daughters and nieces, breaking a promise they said he made to stop. If this man has been sexually assaulting and having babies with his daughters and nieces, what makes you think he's going to stop because you t make him promise? Like what? Why are you leaving your children in the- I can't even- I can't even finish my statement. Wow. Just wow. That day, the two women gathered a group of friends and relatives and headed to the house at 761 Hammond Avenue. When Safina Solorio entered and grabbed her son by the hand, mayhem broke out. According to testimony, there was pushing, name-calling, yelling, and tears. The child was pulled away from her. In the doorway, Wesson blocked others from entering. Some of the kids in the house, still firmly under Wesson's mental control, taunted the two women, calling them names such as Judas, whore, and Lucifer. Finally having enough, the woman returned with the police and a standoff ensued. Before the SWAT team could fully get into position, several gunshots rang out. Marcus walked out of the house and surrendered, as his shirt was covered in blood. As the police entered the house, the scene was horrifying. There were nine bodies stacked up in a pile in one room, as ten coffins lined the wall of another room. The victims were Sabrina Wesson, 25, Elizabeth Wesson, 17, Illabel Wesson, 8, Aviv Wesson, 7, Jonathan Wesson, 7, Ethan Wesson, 4, Jeeva Wesson, 1, Marshy Wesson, 18 months, and Sedona Wesson, 18 months. All of the victims had been shot in the eye. As the police arrested Marcus, they found a 22 caliber pistol. Marcus's fingerprints were not found on the pistol nor did he have gunshot residue on his hands. Sabrina Wesson's DNA was found on the pistol, however, which led Marcus's defense to point to her as the actual killer. They also determined that her gunshot wound might have been self-inflicted. At his trial, although there was no definitive proof that Marcus actually shot his children, he was charged with murder anyway, as they felt that he had pressured his children into a suicide pact. Marcus's oldest son, Dorian, offered support for his father and said, it just doesn't seem like him to do it. I can't give you an intelligent answer. I just don't think he's entirely responsible. He added that if he thought his father was capable of killing children, he would have stopped it. He says that his sisters had had artificial inseminations. He said that his father was related to five of the dead children, but the other two were from another family. What does that have to do with him shooting them though? Like, what does that have to do with any... <sighs> Carrie Wesson... Marcus's mother also spoke out. The Marcus Wesson on TV, I don't recognize. That's not my son. This is a Christian family. This is not a cult. She described Marcus as a bright, intelligent child who loved animals. He and his family avoided dances, dressed modestly, and were vegetarians. Yes, they avoided dances and dressed modestly because your son had them in a cult. Like, what don't you understand? Wesson was convicted of nine counts of first-degree murder on June 17th, 
2005 and also found guilty on 14 counts of forcible rape and the sexual molestation of seven of his daughters and nieces. Wesson was sentenced to death in June 27, 2005 and is currently on death row in San Quentin State Prison. How in the world are you going to leave your children in the same house as a guy who has been sexually molesting you for years. None of the guys said anything either. What? The son was like, oh, if he thought he was capable of killing children, he would have stopped it. Well, your dad was molesting children and having babies by children. What, what, what makes you think he wouldn't have done that? Oh my God, this is ridiculous. There's just so much that could have been prevented. I think Rosemary is the biggest reason. His initial wife, his first wife, is the real reason why this whole thing started. Why are you letting your grown husband marry your underage daughter? That's where it all starts. Why, as a grown woman, are you letting your grown husband marry your 15-year-old daughter? You mean he's been sexually assaulting your daughter for six years and you don't know anything about it? And then you let him marry her? Like, what is wrong with you? This whole case is just so disgusting because this could have been prevented. People try to blame the police. Oh, they could have stabbed you earlier. Man, Rosemary is the reason that Marcus was even allowed to do this because as soon as you allowed him to marry your daughter, you gave him all the free reign in the world. Oh, if she'll let me do this to her daughter, I can do anything I want at this point because I'd already been sexually assaulting her for years and... I've been getting away with it, so I mean, why not do this? And people are trying to say, oh, well, he didn't technically kill the children. Well, all of those people in that house were underneath his spell. They were going to kill themselves because he wanted them to do it and they were going to listen to him. Like, I don't believe, Jesus Christ, man, this, this is crazy. Thank you for listening to the story. Leave a like, hit that subscribe button, that's all I'm going to say. Have a great day, stand the grind, I'm out, peace.